Ciao, Bella. I am Oceana Fortuna, and this is the Breathe, Love, and Magic podcast. We'll talk about a magical mix of mystical methods, including everything that works to live your best life, grow spiritually, and maybe find love. Open your heart, expand your mind, and connect with spirit to embrace the magic that is all around you. If you enjoy the show, please give it a thumbs up or write a glowing review and subscribe so you'll know when the next episode is available. And may good fortune come to all those who listen to the Breathe Love and Magic podcast. And now, on with the show. Hi, this is Oceana Fortuna, and I want to welcome for today's show, Marla Martinson, the mystical matchmaker. Marla is a Los Angeles-based matchmaker, transformational life coach, energy healer, and tarot reader. She has been using her intuitive skills to connect singles with their soulmates for two decades. Marla also hosts a podcast called The Mystical Matchmaker. Marla's latest memoir, The Magic Seeker, humorously chronicles a year in her world as she balances her life as Cupid to muggle multimillionaires and her deep dive into mystical, magical, and the occult. Marla has been featured on the Today Show, WGN Chicago Morning News, Beyond Belief on Gaia TV, and hundreds of radio shows, including Coast to Coast AM with George Nori. You can connect with Marla at www.marlamartinson.com. Marla, welcome. Hey, Oceana. I am so so excited you're here. I know this is going to be really fun. Um, You just never know what's going to happen when you get your mystical friends involved, right? That's right. (laughs) So very excited. And I have to say, I read your book and I loved it, loved it, loved it. There were so oh, many good you. things. Yeah, so many good things in it. And I was already sharing um, one of your stories with a client who was in a similar situation about being able to take a step back, look at the big picture, gain an understanding of why you're really going through what you're going through and what the lesson might be. So you've already helped me help my clients. So thank you. Oh, how awesome. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love I, it. Yes. I love it too. So I'm really curious, how did you even get started with all this uh, magical stuff? Oh my gosh. Well, I've always been interested in magical stuff since I was a kid. I, I, I uh, had a witch's club and I gave myself a witch name, which was Hildegard. And I would ah! do potions and I would always be, uh, I'm not a good artist. I really can't draw, but I would draw constantly draw witches um, and bats. <laughs> so it was just, you know, the witch hat, the witch with the hat and the bat next to her and sometimes a cat. And I don't know, I think it must be coming through from past lives because I just started doing that as a kid, right? And then um, in my 20s, I got the uh, book, somebody told me about a book called The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin, which was written in 1925. And it was uh, all about metaphysics and manifesting and all of that. Um, so I was, I read all of her books and then that was the like late eighties and the nineties got into Wayne Dyer and Stuart Wilde and went to see Marianne Williamson speak oh. on a course in miracles in Los Angeles every week and all of that. And then and then the the and then the two early two thousands it was Agape International Spiritual Center I'd go to that with Michael Beckwith because I live in L A and so I, I was really uh, about the uh, science of mind metaphysics and all of that Course in Miracles stuff and then I started getting back to uh, well two thousand third late two thousand thirteen which is all chronicled in my book The Buddha Made Me Do It A Field Guide to Enlightenment that's the spiritual memoir before the Magic Seeker I talked I I wrote all about how me and my friend Jewel who lives uh, down the street from me she's a celebrity ghost writer we we started on this madcap adventure of going to all of these amazing magical classes and workshops in los angeles so we would we went to learn about how to use pendulums. Uh, I learned crystal healing. I got sort of uh, attuned to Reiki. Uh, we we started. I started going to channelers, um, learning tarot cards. 
um, going even to a Hindu bhajan, like you name it. We just we had this bug of just trying anything and everything and going, we have a lot of, it's very woo-woo in LA. So there's a lot of mystical shops and metaphysical shops. And so we were taking all these classes. And then I, I started, um, ch well, we, she brought over a, a communication board uh, one night and a communication board, a spirit board, an angel board, people call it Ouija, but Ouija is a brand like Kleenex or, you know, oh. is a is tissue. It, it's really tissue, but Kleenex is the brand. So Ouija is the brand that was patented uh, in, you know, that at the turn of the 19th century. So, oh. uh, or the turn of the 20th that. century. Yeah. So uh, by William, Fold, yeah, William Fold. And anyway, so, so she brought over a board and we sat down and, and uh, we had never used one before. And, and we started communicating with some spirits and uh, one came through and spelled out angel. And I said, oh my God, you're my angel. And then it spelled the word guardian. And I said, guard, my guardian angel. And that's how I met my guardian angel, Mirth. She said her name was Mirth. So anyway, Wait a minute, Julie wait a minute. I, Your yeah, yeah. angel is named Mirth? Mirth, M-U-R-T-H, Mirth. Mirth. Oh, because I have named my house the House of Mirth. Ah, with an I though? Mirth. No, yes, Mirth. with an okay. I. Actually, okay. I spelled it with a Y. So, yeah. um, yeah, that's pretty amazing. All right, so I'm sorry to stop you, but keep Oh, no, going. that's okay. Well, first she spelled Merther, M-E-R-T-H-Y-R, Merther. And then I looked it up and it meant, it was like old Welsh or Celtic yeah. or something that, that meant uh, um, martyr, martyr. And so I said, oh my God, that's that's so fitting because I would often play the martyr in my romantic relationships and things. So then oh. she just shortened, shortened it to mirth. And I wanted to connect with her on the board by myself because I'd always have to have Julie come over. <clears throat> and I sat there and I bought a few boards and I watched a lot of... Um, I watched uh, videos on YouTube and how to do it and stuff. And I would sit there and nothing would happen. I couldn't get the board to work by myself. And I asked when uh, in one session with Julie, I asked, why can't I do it myself? And they spelled the word energy. And so it was the energy. So anyway, I continued my, my, um, all of my magical endeavors and I got uh, attuned to uh, attunements to Reiki, which is energy healing, Japanese energy healing. And I went to the master level and then I got some other energetic attunements as well. And after that, that's when I opened up because every night I'd sit with the, with the board for about 10 minutes a night. And then all of a sudden it just started working and it started Ooh. flowing through and I was connecting with mirth. And then I started giving readings to people, angel readings, because it, I was having so much fun with that. And I was just charging like $15, but it was fun. And um, then uh, a second angel came through named Thomas. So he was like second in command and sometimes he would come through. And now at this point, Thomas, and, and I found out it's St. Thomas and, and Mirth has disappeared. She's not coming in anymore. So that's yeah. really interesting. So Thomas is always coming through and now also Palladian star family guides are coming through. And so I'm channeling now more at a, a level where um, I think also um, doing 11 plant medicine journeys really uh, have opened me up a lot too. I so, bet, so, yeah. Yeah, so like last night I was on, uh, I was telling you I was on Fade to Black radio show with Jimmy Church and we and we did some, I did some channeling about what's going on in the world and everything, channeled the, the star um, guides. And then I did uh, like about 50 readings for people, you know, but I used cards. But so now I'm doing it a lot and and I love it. Um, but it's just a process. And so it's once you go down that rabbit hole, as probably you know, it's like it's too magical. It's too freaking amazing to stop. So whether it's crystals or readings or energy healing, whatever, and people love it and people need it. And, you know, I'm, I mean, my bread and butter is matchmaking for the last two decades. But, you know, I have always been creative. So, you know, writing the books and and now coaching um I'm a boundary coach, so uh, transformational life coach. That's something new, and uh, and the readings and energy work. And I also work on a couple psychic hotlines when I want to log on. <laughs> wow! Do you ever sleep? <laughs> I know it's like my husband goes. Do you want to go to the moon too? You know, you, uh, you and then say, isn't this? You know, what's funny though, um, Oceana is 
that um, sometimes I'll, I'll think I'm not doing enough. Like I'm not getting enough oh. done. I'm not, I, and, and I think, gosh, I, I don't know. Other people are more ahead of me and things are, and then I look and think about it and I think, well, no, I, you know, last I published a, a, a fourth memoir and I got a coaching certificate and I'm doing readings and I'm matchmaking and I, well, I guess I'm doing stuff. <laughs> I would say so. I would say so. You know what I so relate to in your story is, that time of opening when it's so exciting and all mm. these new things and you, no matter what you do or touch, there's something fun and exciting and uh, expansive. And, and so you're on a total roll, you know, you're just still, uh, I mean, it sounds like you started on a roll and you're still on a roll and it's, you're going It's an through. unfolding. Yeah. It's yeah. an unfolding that keeps, it'll never end. Well, I, you know, it's so interesting to me how you started with, as a child, you would draw bats and witches and whatever. And, you know, it's funny, I can tell you that I had a real aversion <laughs> personally, like only in the last year did I come to see I, the, my past lives as a witch. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I think I was burned at the stake, like maybe one too many times. I don't know, <laughs> but I definitely was like, I am not a witch, you know? Oh, okay. So it's really funny, but I have no objection to it. Like in terms of anything else. And I'm very interested in all the pagan aspects and the earth-based religion aspects or whatever. And mm -hmm. I know that that is my root. Uh, it's so funny. I, I, I was, um, I mentioned to you once before I was, working with a magical coach and she was saying, telling me that so many of the things that, it, that I just did naturally, like I write these little songs to help me manifest things. And she was like, well, that's mm. just charms. So she was mm -hmm. telling me how I'm doing all the witchy stuff. It's mm -hmm. just so funny that I, you know, while you were able to embrace that at a very young age, that wasn't something at the time for me. So now I'm just coming into appreciating those aspects of things but you know because I've been studying for a really long time too and um and you just you know I've really gone through waves I think it comes in waves where you have these expansions and there's so many new things and you try and you open up and and then maybe sometimes there's a little lull and then it comes again you know and so I guess that's just yeah. how it works it's always there for us. You know, it's always there. It's within us. What I find so interesting is you bring up the Palladians because um, there seems to be a lot of Palladian conversation right now. Have you noticed that? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, there's the Octurians and the Andromedans and there's different star systems. But Pleiades, yeah, they're barely working within the fabric of society now, I find. And I have Pleiades. I was told that by channelers, different channelers that I had ladies you know uh, uh family star family there and that i and so because we weren't always on earth you know right. when we're not we're in a body so we're in different star systems and different <clears throat> different galaxies and stuff and and uh and then so what happened it was very interesting so i was told that so in the buddha made me do it uh a field guide to enlightenment i tell the story about going to a woman called grace kavanaugh who channels osira which is a collective of 12 and I went and I had a session and they said that I am, uh, fair, well, they said I'm fairy, which I've like have also from fairy, the fairy realm, fairy energy. But then they said Pleiades. So, okay. So I was like, okay, that's cool. And, but you know, I didn't know what to do with that. And then on the board, see, I had a few years ago, I, I, I would keep notes when I would get messages on the board and I went and looked back at my notes and I connected with a being on the board called Calderon. And he said he was Plady, a Pleiadian guide. So then, so that was interesting. And then with, when um, uh, I, you know, in my book, The Magic Seeker, I go, I talk about Riz and Red Eagle, uh, Riz, mm -hmm. my spiritual teacher, and he channels an Indian, um, American Indian guide, his American Indian guide. He's a trans channel, full body trans channel. So he leaves his body and Red Eagle comes in and Red Eagle, I asked him about, well, it's spelled with a C-H. So I said, Chalderon, I got this, 
this guy Chalderon coming through and he goes, oh, he's telling me he pronounces it Calderon. And yes, he's a Pleiades guide and he comes through for you at some times. So then I would connect with him sometimes. And then when I do uh, did some plant medicine journeys, they I start channeling the Pleiades. They come through and they say, we are off planet guides and we are. So they come, th they started coming through. Um, and coming through with light language with my hands, my hands would just start doing these oh. things like I, you know, and then still sometimes when I'm doing readings, I'll start, you know, with the hand and then, and uh, I asked Red Eagle about that. He says, yeah, that's your guides coming through. So they're, they're coming through like, you know, like that. So um, it's, it's a, some, a lot of people, I bet, you know, this is a, if you do a lot of, well, I, I bet some people will think this woman's off her rocker. <laughs> You know, they'll probably think this woman has really lost it, but, but it's, it's, and I probably now years ago, years ago, even though I was into all the, you know, metaphysics, I loved uh, like James von Prague or uh, I used to think if people would say, oh yeah, I'm connected to these Palladian guides or talking to angels, I didn't really believe them. And I thought, oh, they're kind of wacky. You know, that's really <laughs> weird for them to say that. And that's, that's I don't, they're like not really, you know, grounded or, and I thought, huh, wow, they, they really got a lot of guts to say that, you know, but um, then it starts happen to, happening to me uh -huh. and, um, and it's not something I'm imagining. It's not, and, and, you know, when I'm giving, now I'm channeling, I have a good friend, her name is Marianne. She's a, um, an author. She wrote a really interesting, amazing book about angels and she's French and she lives in LA and we're very close friends and she gives re readings and stuff for fun. But she is, this is what, and this is so cool. This is what I'd asked for out in the universe. I needed somebody to help me uh, with my channeling and my mediumship. I needed someone to sit with me so that I could do it, you know, to, mm -hmm. and so she now because of COVID we're on the phone, we're on the phone about two or three days a week. And I just, I channel and she takes notes and then I'll channel for her about her life and stuff. Yeah. And she'll take notes. And then I do mediumship and she takes notes and then gives me feedback about the person that I was bringing through of her, from her life who passed over. So to practice my mediumship, to practice um, stuff and the stuff that comes, she's like, Oh my God, this is absolutely incredible. So, I mean, there's so much verification. And then when I give readings, I get the feedback. So it's, it's not just like gibberish. It's right. concrete, yes. concrete um, messages that resonate with the person. So um, that's where I know I'm not just like making this stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Well, you know, it's funny. Um, I, I'm actually taking a mediumship course now from the shift network. I don't, I'd never even mm -hmm. heard of them until recently. I've heard of the shift network. Okay. Well, you're going to be another practice person. We can yes, practice together. Yes. Yes. I can't wait. Yes. So okay. um, I'm working on that too. And you know, what's really interesting is I have done some media sh mediumship work back in the days when I did my, um, you know, worked at psychic fairs and um, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just looking for answers to the questions that the person in front of me had asked. And sometimes their grandmother would come through or a father would come mm. through or whatever and give me information or whatever. But I didn't have a practiced method to get there or a structure to use. Or So I thought, well, maybe I could. I, this is an extremely expansive time energetically anyway. So I thought, well, let's hop on this, you know, expansion wave and learn something. And so I'm taking this class. And honestly, I'm going to tell you. It's a little hard for me. And what's hard is when I work with spirit, I am looking for answers. I, I'm very practical and I want, I, I'm looking to help people. So I want to get solutions and guidance and answers to whatever obstacles or situations are, you know, getting them worked up or a bothersome or whatever. Like I'm looking to move, help people move forward. And so in the mediumship, the way they have it set up in this class, it's just like you kind of talk to dead people, you know? And so it, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with talking to dead people, um, but just because they're dead doesn't mean they know anything. Mm -hmm. doesn't make them smarter just because they died. And um, I, it's, it just... I don't know. It just feels funny to me because they're going in without asking any questions. 
So it's just whatever that well, loved one from the other side uh -huh. feels like talking about. And today, right, because they, that's the evidential mediumship you want. You want to let that person. You want the person to know that their loved one is a lot is not really dead. That they yeah. they are there on the other side. So they they're going to come through with with uh, evidence. You know, like say, oh yeah, you were at the grocery store yesterday, and all those cans fell off the shelf, or yes, something that yes. they'll they'll prove so that's why it's they're not giving advice but they're given evidence that Proof. they're still there to so people there. will feel like oh my gosh so they are okay they are with me and, and, and is, i would yeah mm -hmm. i'm sorry it is really amazing because this woman who did a reading for me i'm like she told me um that somebody was coming through and as proof there's a is there a smiley mug in the house like a coffee mug and i'm like I, oh my gosh we have a big round yellow smiley mug sitting oh, on my yes. husband's desk and i'm like yeah. that's rather specific yes that's what i'm talking about yeah. that's yeah. what we got to bring through yeah yeah and then okay. i would love to be able to help like mi find missing pe persons or you know things like that wouldn't that be great to they use well it would certainly be really helpful i mean really yeah. really helpful uh, you know um i'm I'm really interested in moving people forward and spiritual development. That's where, I don't know, that's just mm -hmm. my like groove, you know? Right. So for me, that's why I'm saying the mediumship thing is hard. Like if I'm just going to wait for something like today, somebody was talking about trying on slippers and I'm like, where are we going with this? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but on the other hand, the woman she was saying that to was just trying on slippers. So it right. was again, so that's what it's yeah. absolutely yeah. proof. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely proof. Well, um, amazing. Amazing. So I just want to talk a little bit more about the Pleiadians. I don't know if, how you feel about this, but what kind of information comes through when you are talking to them? Like, do you know what they're about or is there a general area of interest or topic that they're talking on or is it more general? Mm-hmm. They've been coming through with things about, you know, what's going on with the world right now and the, the virus and how, you know, expansion and, and um, gosh, it's, um, they, I, I, I channel it and then Marianne writes a lot of it down and then I forget after oh, I, I channel understand. it, but it's, but it's a lot of, it's just a lot of uh, what, you know, about our energy and about, um, it's more universal stuff for people, you know, it's really, it's not it's really not personal messages for people. The personal ones, Thomas comes through and I can give. So I, so I do these, uh, I do something new. It's called Marla's Magical uh, Message Circle. Oh, beautiful, <laughs> it's, I love it's it. On, okay, it's on Saturday night at 6 p.m. Pacific and uh, it's only $10 at this point and uh, it's a limit of eight people and we come on Zoom and uh, I do a little, you know, energy work, meditation and ground us and all that and then I come around to each person and I channel for them and uh, I give them a message that they need to know that the guides want them to know and then afterwards they can make comments or questions and then I give them another, you know, answer and people are loving it. It's like full every week. So um, that that's is something I have it's on my That's website and it's under work with me and it says message circle. So oh, if anybody good. wants to join that, yeah, yeah. Cause That's I was going to ask you, life. how do they, how do they, maybe I'll have to check it out. How do yes. they um, find out about it? That's great. So it's just on your website under work with me. That's mm -hmm. fabulous. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah, it's more, that's what's so amazing right now is people are embracing this in such a big way and mm -hmm. having openings and it's so wonderful to see the spiritual expansion. Mm -hmm. It I, is. And, and yeah, and I interview, you know, and you probably do too. Well, for my matchmaking, since the men are the paying clients, I'm interviewing women constantly to be in the database. And so I'm talking to them and so many of them are into spiritual development or all of this stuff. It's incredible. And even one of my a couple of my male clients, they were saying, yeah, I've, I've been doing plant medicine journeys and shamanic journeys, and I've been meditating. And I'm like, this is phenomenal. The guys are starting to open up to some, you know, to this. Wow. Well, there are always some men who are doing it, but when you start right. to hear more and mm -hmm. more, that's such a good sign. That's, that's yeah. that personally to me is very exciting. So tell me, um, can you tell me about, uh, 
one magical experience that you've had, it could be work or personal that you'd be willing to share that, you know, you found astonishing. Uh, okay. I'll tell you uh, something that <clears throat> was really incredible when I, when uh, this must've happened maybe in 2014 um, or 15. So when I was first really diving deep and doing all the attunements and all this, I had a lot of stuff happening like at night, like astral travel, I'd leave my body, I'd see uh, little guides. And I still see, sometimes I think the other night, you know, I, I must be through the third eye because I, I see like a man standing there at the end of the, the bed or something. I'm like, and I, and I, and I wake up scream and I scream because I think somebody broke in and then, you know, with my eyes open, nobody's there, but it's just one of my guides standing there or somebody. So anyway, one night I'm, <clears throat> and I have astro traveled when I was a kid too. Occasionally it would just happen. I never tried. I didn't know what, what was, it was. So I, I was in bed one night, my husband's sleeping next to me. And all of a sudden I'm standing, find myself standing up in, which is really my astral body, but it feels like it, you're really, you don't know the difference. I mean, it doesn't feel any different. So I'm standing up facing the corner of, of the bedroom and my, the bed is on the left there, my husband's sleeping. And I see, look in the, see some light coming out of the corner of the um, walls where the ceiling and wall meets, right? Some light just coming. Wow. And I, and I'm looking and I'm like, oh, and then I see there's, I know it's a knowing that there's somebody coming out of that light. Somebody's coming. And I, and, and I couldn't see the person, but I, I knew it. And I said, it's dad, it's dad, it's dad because my dad had passed away in 2001. So I said, it's dead. And I was wondering how come my husband can't hear me yelling? He's still sleeping. How come he can't hear me? And I was like, oh my God. And then I, I was a little bit afraid, but I forced myself to keep looking. And then I felt, found myself back in my bed and my dad was sitting at the end of my bed. And I, and he was wearing a monk's, like a brown monk uh, cloak with a, with a hood. And I scramble to the end of the bed and I grab his arm and I'm, I, I look at him and his face was a little thinner than it was in real life. And then his eyes were kind of watering and he was looking deeply in. And I, and I just looked at him and I said, I love you. 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 And, and his, no, his made that he didn't say anything, but his face was nodding like a, you know, his eyes were acknowledging like, yes, mm -hmm. you know, it's me. Yes. Nodding. And then he disappeared and I scrambled back in under the covers and I, I was awake. I mean, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this just happened. I just saw dad, dad just came. I can't believe this. And it felt so, you know, it, this was years ago now, like, and uh, it still feels, I can feel it as if it was, you know, so then I said, oh, I was talking to, I was still new in all this stuff. And I was talking to a psychic or somebody. I, and he said, oh yeah, that was you. You met him on an astral level. You were out of the body and that's oh. where you saw him on the astral. So he wasn't, so that's where I saw him. Like if I wasn't, if I was just sitting there awake, I wouldn't have seen him. But because right. I was out of body on that plane, I met him there. So that was wow, super magical. Yeah, That is really magical. <laughs> Wow. You know, both my parents have passed and at their funerals, I saw that each one of them. So I saw my oh, father oh my at a distance. He was just an outline and it, you know, the way I talk about it, it sounds a lot of like Star Wars because mm. it was an outline of a body and there was a disturbance in the field, <laughs> in, mm. in the force. So even though it was just like you could see energy waves inside the outline of the body. It was kind of weird. It wasn't like, but I knew it was him. But with my mom, I had just finished her, uh, my part of the eulogy. And then at the funeral was done and people started walking out. And there was a, um, a stage behind me. So when I, I, I don't know why, but I turned around and in my mind's eye, I could see her sitting on the edge of the stage with her knees bent, you know, her legs hanging over, kicking her legs. And I'm like, mom, what are you doing? You're sitting on the stage. She goes, it's my funeral. <laughs> I'm like, oh, good point. Good point. Yeah. So, so, you know, they talk about how you come to see your funeral and I guess so. Because mm -hmm. I saw them both there. So yeah. amazing. So that really is that. But your story is amazing. I don't know how 
it's so funny because I could see her, but she was in a distance and I couldn't really, I wasn't really seeing her with my eyes. Like, it seems to me like you were really seeing your father, but like you said, maybe it was because you were on the astral plane. So it was on the astral. I mean, I was in bed with my eyes closed. I mean, I was sleeping. My body was, it was my astral body that was out and I could see him. So we see, just like when we're dreaming, our eyes are closed, we're, but we see everything so yes. clearly. We see, we feel everything. So that's yeah. going through the third eye into the other dimension. And that's what happens if you do plant medicine journey. So it could be ayahuasca, it could be psilocybin mushrooms, it could be some of these things. So when you're in that, what happens is the third eye opens and you go into another dimension. And that's when the Pleiades start streaming through, the fairy realm starts streaming wow. through guides. You can hear, you can know things and stuff. So that's what happens there. And that's what makes those things so magical and so yeah. um, profound and life-changing. Many times I'll, I'll feel, um, one, of, one of the nights um, I was, le- a lot of times I sleep on the couch. My husband, uh, he'll watch TV really, he's a, an entertainer. So all his life he stayed up, you know, you get home at one, two in the morning. And then, so he's used to being up late and he'll play the, you know, we have a big screen TV in the bedroom. So if he's watching, it's too loud. Or if he starts snoring, I'm just like, go out and sleep on the couch. Yeah. And so, so I'm laying there on the couch one night and, my my back is to the to the living room and my my front of me is towards the you know back of the couch and i'm le- sleeping and i all of a sudden i can feel a presence standing behind me and and uh somebody touched the, my lower back like like putting their hands on my lower back like a healing a nice healing presence and i and i thought to myself and i was awake i thought well Adolfo wouldn't come out here and do that in the middle of the night you know and i and uh, I turned around and of course I'd saw no one, but it was my guides. And I often feel them touching me at night, I, my crown um, uh, throughout the day. Sometimes I'll feel the guides touching my head, my crown will be activated or I'll, at night I'll feel t- touches on my shoulder, my back, my, and oh, one night, this is funny. So I were laying in bed watching TV, uh, me and my husband, and uh, I'm towards kind of towards the edge of uh, the bed there. And I feel somebody pulling my hair off to the side, to the side, like somebody wow. reached up and pulled. And then I said, Hey, Hey, you guys stop that. Stop teasing me. And Adolfo goes, what's going on? And I said, my guides are pulling my hair. And he goes, Marla, I'm really worried about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> I did channel one night for my husband and um, I haven't really told very many people this story, but um, his mom came through and um, she had a lot to say to him. And it was just, it was actually hard to hold the energy for her to come through and talk to him. And it was extremely emotional. And, you know, mm-hmm. his mom died when he was 12. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's a really impressionable time in your life. So, it was just unbelievably emotional. And when we were done, he was like, don't do that again. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you were doing mediumship with her. That is fun. I can't wait to practice with you. This is going to be so much fun. <laughs> it will be fun. It will be fun. So so um, can you tell me about like a client that you've helped, whether it was, you know, doing a Reiki session or a card reading or whatever it is you, you want to talk about or a matchmaking thing, whatever, anything that you want to talk about in terms of helping your clients and having the intuition and the magic and that kind of thing. I have had some of my male, a couple of my male clients come over, um, uh, matchmaking clients come over for a Reiki session, crystal healing session. And that was really great. Um, uh, This one guy, actually, he was a client. He was from East India. He was an East Indian guy. Ah. Great personality. Just so, so he might've, but he, you know, you'd think, okay, from India, they're more mystical over there and stuff, but he had not had one before. And he was a doctor. Actually, he was a doctor, a Western doctor. Uh, and, but he wanted to try it and he came over twice and, and, uh, loved it. Um, so people, when they experience it now with COVID, I have had one person come over and I did it, but my, my husband doesn't really want people in the house. So, um, so I'm doing distance and distance healing is just as powerful. I'm doing a lot of distance healing. So the person will, um, you can, you know, the, the options on my website and 
I do it from they the person lays down at their house on their end and maybe yeah. puts a little music and candle and then I work from my altar here and a lot of people say oh my god I felt the tingling I felt the heat I felt this and that I feel so peaceful I slept great so they they really love it so I do the distance healing now and um so I think the energy work really really helps helps people um in a lot of ways uh getting their chakras more aligned or or they realize um, they even connect with their guides. Sometimes they say, oh, I felt my, a guide touch my shoulder. Wow. Um, so that's a nice way to start for somebody who's just wanting to dabble in some, get a little taste of, of woo woo. Yeah. Um, and then also with the readings, you know, or channeling now, what I offer is um, either a half an hour or an hour, somebody can uh, channel, you know, be with me on, on uh, zoom or FaceTime or on the phone and I'll, I'll channel directly for them and they can ask questions and they get a lot of clarity maybe on things that, that they were um, wondering about. So it's all, um, you know, it's all about, I think, clarity and confirmation and um, some steps to move forward. Yeah, that sounds excellent. That sounds excellent. Now, um, is there any kind of advice that you wish you could give your younger self based on what you know today? Yes, I, I was bullied quite badly as a kid, you know, especially really? in sixth grade. I had bright red hair and freckles and uh, I, um, yeah, and, and I think I would tell myself, you know what, just embrace fully uh, all of your magic and uh, don't, don't care what other people think. Wow. Yeah. It's, um, kids are cruel, you know, kids can be really cruel and, um, you know, that was a hard, hard thing to go through, but, uh, but it, 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 um, so many kids are, and even adults, you know, people like to bully, uh, look at all the online trolls, the the horrible things people write on online to, to, I mean, and these are adults. I, I can't even believe it. I just, it still blows my mind. These are adults, uh, writing this stuff. I know. Um, and it looks like a 12 year old did it or something. It's, um, shocking. I, 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 I don't know. I look back, you know, I grew up in the uh, sixties and seventies and in the, see, people were just more elegant back then. You know, they had more class <laughs> and more, uh, decorum. They wouldn't just be blurting all this crap out, you know, to people as much, except of course, you know, the bullying in school or whatever. But I, I kind of, I like that. And, and I remember Red Eagle telling me that spirit guide, you know, that is channeled through Riz. He says, you like elegance. Isn't that what you want? Elegance. And I like, I like how, when you delve into the spirituality, you have, you have more of a sense of that we're all one and that everybody's on their path and that we're spirits and you're not going to be, be, uh, so quick to judge or hurt someone, um, yes. you know, we'll look at like, well, this is what they're going through and, and having to clear or their karma or their soul contracts. And, uh, we accept pe- people. Yeah, very true. Um, wow. That was a lot. Uh, my head is spinning <laughs> from thinking about your, you know, the bullying in the fifth and sixth grade and telling yourself that, what did you tell yourself that you're just embrace all my magic and not embrace. care about what other people think and embrace yeah. who you are because it's too much. We get these fads too. And people have to, you know, uh, everybody at one point was all the women were getting breast implants at, uh, you know, in the early two thousands, when I started in matchmaking, oh. it's like I did every single person. And now it's the big butts that are in, in, in style on Instagram. <laughs> and then it's the big lips. And that it's like, everybody's following this thing that they think they have to do to fit in or to be accepted. And it's so important important to know we are just a spark of the divine and all individual and we have to embrace ourselves and our magic magic in every way and who we are and not be a sheep and follow you know trends or other people to be accepted and so that is totally applicable to today you know that message you would give your younger self because it no matter what how old you are or when it is embracing and accepting yourself is really the key to being open and enjoying more of your life because most of the time we're so busy criticizing ourselves never mind the bullies who are criticizing us or the people who are writing on the internet but we often really criticize ourselves too so yeah that makes total sense to me because you just have to embrace who you are your own power and magic your own sense of individuality and 
remember that you're a spark of the divine. That's, that is eloquent. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And especially as we get older, it's harder too. like, I, you know, I'm, you know, I was very beautiful as I, when I was younger, I was a model, I was an actor, I always looked great. And now it's things have, you know, changed a lot as I'm getting older (laughs) and it's, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. It's like, uh, you know, I'm not really looking in the mirror so much, (laughs) but we have to, what we, what we do, you know, I do Facebook lives and stuff and it's like, oh crap. So it's, I have to take that to heart myself and say, what am I, what am I sharing? What am I um, bringing to people instead of how, how you look? So it's a lesson to, it's always a lesson to do because we can be the most cruel to ourselves. Isn't that the truth? I mean, sometimes I feel like one of the things I do most with my clients is just help them learn how to be kind to themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Because people can be so mean. They don't even know they're doing it to themselves. And they would never talk to anybody else like that. And to say the horrible things they say, like, who do you think you are? And you're not Mm -hmm. worthy anyway, and whatever. And I'm like, oh my gosh, let's re let's rewrite that script. You know? Yes. Very important. Because then they're not going to call in a wonderful soulmate for themselves. And, uh, and I was reading something I've seen this so many times. A lot of people take better care of their car than they do themselves. Oh my gosh. They're eating junk. They're not getting exercise or fresh air. They're not talking to themselves nicely, but they'll be out there polishing their car, getting it, you know, tuned up and, you know, all this stuff, but they don't, you know, so, or, or they take better care of their pets, you know, well, which they should, (laughs) but better care of their pets than themselves. You know, they'll make sure their dog has the organic food and stuff, but they'll be eating crap. So (laughs) we've got to, you know, take care of ourselves you have to laugh you have to laugh at yes we laugh do. at our oh I'm constantly laughing at myself <laughs> what about um let's just talk for a minute uh before we wrap up let's talk for a minute about magic in a daily sense like do you have a daily practice or how do you bring magic into your life on a regular basis mm, great question yes well Magic in my life on a daily basis. I mean, my, my sanctuary here where I'm sitting now, you know, it's my office where I work, but it's also my, you know, I've got my altar and all my crystals. It's like my own little uh, studio apartment. <laughs> my husband is a composer. He's got his stu- recording studio. Then I've got my little studio here, which I have my, you know, all my stuff. And, uh, and my dog, Macy, who's so magical, she's in here with me all the time. And, and so it's always just coming in here and put, doing a little, you know, burning some sage and a little candle and you know doing my meditation and then pulling some cards and maybe um logging onto the hotline and giving some readings is very magical or just reading you know people can just read some um spiritual literature or journal or take a bubble bath with some crystals and candles you can bring magic in so many ways making yourself a beautiful herbal tea and infusing it with your energy um everything we do can be um, magic, what, taking a walk and noticing the pine cones or the trees, the trees, these trees are so powerful, the roots that go way down and connect with all the other trees and they communicate together and yeah. they provide shelter for the squirrels and the birds. And they've got so much um, magic in there and the, the, you know, the fairy realm in there, you know, they, they, they yeah. are really living energetic beings. So you can look for the magic in everything, in every moment. And even like a chair you're sitting on or your desk, this came from a tree or as part of the earth. So it still has that earth, it, it, even though it's li- vibrating very low, it has that um, universal life force energy and from the earth. So it's got energy in it. It's funny because when I was at my mom's once, one of her neighbors, the car wouldn't start. And I was just attuned to Reiki and I was practicing a lot. She goes, Oh, give it some Reiki. You know, she was joking. And I did, I gave the car some Reiki for like three minutes and it's, and it started up. (laughs) So it, 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 inanimate objects are, if we looked uh, at a very, uh, quantum level if it, it it's moving it's it's they're not just sta- standing still in its yeah. energy so yeah. we can you know yeah I, I have certainly given Reiki to my printer <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah I do my husband thinks I'm crazy when I give Reiki to my computer or something he says that's yeah. not true that's ridiculous I mean he just cannot wrap his mind around that it's, one but I'm like so well funny. that's okay I'm still gonna give it some well you know from a strictly scientific perspective um everything boils down to the um 
protons and the neutron. How's it go? Proton, mm -hmm. the electrons and the protons going around the neutron in the center. Oh no, it's I got it now. Electron goes around the center, the nucleus with the protons, and that's what it is. The electrons go around. So if everything is just at the atomic level, there's mm -hmm. nothing solid there. Right. They say we're not. We're mostly. Uh, Empty space. Empty space. So why, if you're sending energy to energy, why wouldn't that be received? I mean, when yeah. you really break it down to that scientific level, mm -hmm. um, it, it really works. I mean, they're using Reiki in hospitals all across the nation yeah. uh, for patients. Yeah. For they they uh, train staff, uh, get pay for them to go get um, Reiki. Uh, master you know yeah. level um they have them in operating rooms giving reiki to the surgeons and the um you know the patients so oh, wow. it, it's powerful it is it's i also powerful. heard i also heard that if somebody's doing chemo it's really good to get reiki treatments it helps chelate it it helps get it out of the body or something oh, helps that's move it you know what i mean yeah it's, it's yeah with cancer patients and stuff it, it's very and it's very calming um, very common. Uh, there's also been been many instances like Deborah Deborah um, Deborah King, yeah Deborah King, a Hay House uh, author. I I did study with her um, online and and then seen her in in person. And her story is amazing. I think she's probably in her 60s now, but when she was in her 20s, she was a high powered lawyer and she'd been sexually abused as a kid and she was smoking and drinking and she developed cancer. And I don't remember if it was breast or cervical. I don't remember which one, but she went to, ended up going to an energy healer. And I think like on the third session or something, she knew that something happened and her cancer was gone. Wow. And she, it had cured it. So it can happen. It's not, you know, I'm not saying that not guaranteed. You know, you're going to get, no, no, but it did for her. And she was so amazed that she says, I have to find out what this is and how I can help other people. So then she traveled the world, like went to India and different places and studied and learned. And now she's a master, you know, energy healer and wow. teaches all about that. But she's, you know, healthy and fine today and in her, you know, I think 60s. So yeah, it's, it's, it has some miraculous results and um, it's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful thing to do. It is, it is. And the greatest thing about talking to you about it is how much fun you have with it, because isn't that the best part? It's like, you know, there's plenty of opportunities to be serious and intense, but when you can lighten up and still accomplish something and have fun while you're doing it, that's where I want to be. You know, I, I just, you know, one of my goals for 2021 is to bring in more mirth and happiness, you know, let's, <sighs> let's lighten yeah. up and learn to enjoy. And even if there is COVID and we can't see people go outside and be in the sunshine and, you know, like I'm in the Northeast, so I can't wait to see my crocuses. Like the minute the crocuses mm, come up, crocuses, the end of February, the I know I'm yeah. like, whoa, it's going to be springtime. So, um, I just think whatever you can do to lighten up and enjoy what is, you can't yeah. go wrong. So any kind of last piece of advice you want to share with our listeners today? You've been so much yeah. fun to talk to. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You know, um, some people talk to me and say, you know, well, I'm, I have been afraid to come out of the closet with my magic or my woo woo because I'm worried about what people might think. And when my, when I first started going real gung ho with all of this, like 2014, my husband, because I work with high level men, you know, for the matchmaking, they're very, you know, they're, they're, you know, doctors, lawyers, business owners, all of this. And, and my husband said, you better be careful. You're putting stuff on Facebook. You're doing things. You're, they're going to think you're crazy. You, you can lose, you know, your reputation could be tarnished. You might lose business and people worry about that. But when uh, it never happened, I mean, I, I it, nothing ha like that happened. And I just kept stepping into it more and more and more because when you are your authentic self, you know, it'll only, I, I feel it'll only um, benefit you when you step into your authenticity and live from that place. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, you know, I don't know, maybe if you're in politics, I think there was somebody in politics, some woman, and she was saying that she was abducted uh, by aliens. You know, I remember that story that was a couple of years ago. And I think people really, yeah. you know, reamed her for that. But, 
<laughs> you know, I'm not saying that you have to do that. And I no. know in some instances you can't, you know, to come, but, but I'm just saying when you live from that space of authenticity, you just, you're living in all of your magic and all of your, why you're here. And, and it just starts unfolding and you never know where it'll lead you. So, so um, don't be afraid to be authentic. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because there are great rewards mm -hmm. for knowing and being your true self, right? Yep. Yeah. Excellent. I love it. Excellent. Thank Marla, you. thank you so much. And let's just say your website again, www.marlamartinson.com. Marlamartinson.com. It's M-A-R-L-A-M-A-R-T-E-N-S-O-N. Marlamartinson.com. Yeah. So I hope people connect and thank you again for being here. And until next time, enjoy the magic. Thanks for listening today. Don't forget to like this episode if you enjoyed it. Write a positive review if you feel inspired and subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'll have more about love and magic next time. Until then, this is Oceana Fortuna reminding you to share your love and seek magic every day. Mm -hmm.